had a lot of challenges after having kids um, and having a successful career and, you know, having my own consulting um, work and finding that the same abilities I had to kind of nut it out and fix things Mm. Uh, wasn't working at home so I was doing like the talk therapy we were doing like marriage counseling and meditation and you know teepees under the moon if you can think of it, <laughs> I did it that and is amazing. <laughs> right you know I was like I'm gonna do all the things and I was feeling really um kind of resentful and bitter because I was like this is what they say is supposed to make you feel calm this is what they say is supposed to make you feel really regulated and Mm -hmm. you know it was great when I was in the moment like you know having a good talk therapy session finding out what happened when I was three and ten and having a good cry in the teepee (laughs) in my teepee with some cacao and it was lovely Mm -hmm. but then I'd come home and I'd be like trying to bring all that zen back and then someone wouldn't put their shoes on or or we'd be in a fight about the dishes and I was like oh my god I I can't like how does this work how am I meant to kind of bring all of that in my day-to-day life as opposed to going away feeling great and then coming home and just being triggered yeah um and I figured out along the way um that the way that we think our brain works actually doesn't work that way so you have these parts of the brain the, the higher so to break it down really simple. You've got like the higher cortex where you get all that information from talk therapy. You know, you can make considered decisions and, you know, understand the consequences of your actions. But then you've got your amygdala or amygdalae. There's two little like almond shaped organs in the base of your brain. And they're like your fire station and it actually operates. So if you're just getting all of this knowledge about what to do and what to say, you know, like nonviolent communication techniques and aware parenting and what to say to your kids and rah, rah. But your your emergency fire station is jumping in ahead mm. and getting in in front of your higher cortex. You're kind of left with these um, guilt responses of, I know what I'm supposed to do and say, but when I'm really feeling angry or scared or hurt, you know, I just can't do it. I, I lose my temper and I yell or I shut down and I walk away um, and I can't connect. And that's because your brain is designed that way. So when you realize that, and when you realize that 80% of the nerves in your body go from the body to the brain, not the other way around. Wow. So you can start to understand how important it is to use the whole body in regulating yourself, as opposed to just bullying your body into calming down, using your high cortex that's not really in charge in the first place. You know, it's only in charge of like 20% of the nervous system process from the from the brain to the body. Everything else is a feedback system, a loop that allows your body to go, okay, is it safe? Can I relax? Can I calm down? Mm. Um, can I reach for the tools in the higher cortex? Because if the amygdala is in charge and it feels that like fight, flight, fall and freeze response, it's not going to let you access what you know anyway. Mm, wow. So when you understand the science behind it and that, the science is really only now just starting to catch up to modern psychology. That's when you realize it's not you. It's not that you haven't been doing the tools properly. It's not that, you know, what you're learning isn't useful. It is. It's really useful. You read all the books, go to the TP sessions, you do the <laughs> parenting. Like, yep. great, it's fantastic. And make sure that you've got some tools to work with how your body and your brain operate together so that it's useful and that you can reach it when you need to. 